Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Crown Unfiltered. We are outside today and I uh, have to apologize for the noise. Some genius decided to mow his lawn, but uh, I'll keep this short and to the point. Um, every now and again, you come across a young person that seems to have it all. They have the skills needed to do whatever job it is that they need to do. And they also have the emotional intelligence that will provide a solid platform into becoming a great leader. And um, I, I honestly, I'm a pretty fussy person and, and, and very critical, unfortunately, as well. But I, I'm working on it anyway. But um, the point is, I've only really met, to my knowledge, two people like this in this industry. And uh, my guest this week is a young Frenchman called Michael Bartley. And he is one of those guys. Michael knew from a young age that he wanted to be a car designer at a very young age. And um, he found a, uh, an article in a magazine at the age of seven with um, some sketches and a model and a picture of uh, the design director of Renault at that time, none other than Mr. Patrick Le Comon. And Michael went to his dad at that age and said to him, Dad, this is the head of Renault Design. I need to send him my drawings. He, he had the initiative to do that by himself. He went to his dad and his dad said, okay, we can do that. And Michael at that age said to him, I know he might not see them. He might not even look at them, but I've got to try. So that kind of gives you um, an indication of the, the raw, um, initiative that this person has and always seemed to have had from a, from a very young age so anyway um, I will I'm not going to spoil the story he did send that drawing off and uh, Patrick did did receive the sketch and um, yeah there's a beautiful story that unfolded as a result of that so you'll have to you'll have to watch this episode to to hear all about it and hopefully at some point we can get Patrick on on the show as well and he might be able to explain that story from his perspective but uh, let's not get our hopes up just yet because this is a uh, there are no guarantees so anyway enjoy and uh, much respect Michael you, you don't you you don't drink at all no no actually sorry to disappoint but yeah my Frenchiness on that aspect is completely non-existing so just design and crystal meth <laughs> yeah well yeah well like i used to say i don't drink but i compensate a lot with food okay i have the same problem but i drink as well so uh, it's just like a all-round consuming everywhere yeah so i need to sort that out <laughs> so dude listen i um you first came on my radar for that um that concept car that you worked on which subsequently i found out was like one of the first projects you worked on the proceed concept right e exactly yes yeah yes. yeah i had the chance to be part of that thing definitely uh that is a a very very special car and i think that um it, I mean, you know, we were paying, I, I mean, I was paying attention to Kia for a long time, I think basically since, since Peter Schreier showed up and, yeah. uh, but that car particularly stood out to me as like something, it, it was a very, very cool thing. I, I really, really liked it. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, sure. Well, actually to speak about this one, um, I should start to speak about the production car because it all started from there, basically, um, because we were about to finish the production car and we were asking ourselves the question of how could we tease it, basically. And um, at that point, um, we started to discuss about it, defining a bit, okay, what would be the, the most interesting elements of it uh, to tease on the show car and everything. And um, this is where basically the two projects started to go in parallel. So you had the production car finishing and the show car starting. 
So we could also kind of feed the production car a little bit towards the end with some element of the, of the, of the concept. Um, so what happened is that another guy, another one of my colleagues, um, uh, senior exterior designer actually, um, started on the project together with me. Because the thing is that when I did these two projects, I was very young in the company because I actually started on the proceed production car that I wasn't even graduated. So each time on the two of them, I had an experienced guy working with me. And um, I must say that I was very lucky with the two guys I worked on because on the production car, I worked with a guy called Alex Daniel. Um, you might be familiar with the sub heroics concept. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. So basically, he had a huge, a huge role in that, in that car. And uh, so he was like helping me on the production car. So you can imagine how excited about, I was about it. And uh, on the concept car, it was a guy called Vincent Grit. Uh, who used to be designer at Citroën and he did uh, for Kia uh, show cars like the Pop, um, wow. which was like one of my favorites. And at Citroën, he did this very, very impressive concept car back then that was called the Cimetis, which is this red, uh, very sporty looking thing from 2006. And this was also all, one of my all time favorites. So I was super, super lucky to, to work with these two guys and really learned a lot from them. And this, this was really the thing. On the concept car, Vincent was kind of really taking care of everything that was related to the big picture, I would say, like, you know, the global proportions and everything, make, it, make the production car look a lot more dramatic than it was because he knew exactly what to do on, you know, where you should place the rims and how you should pump the overall volume, size of the cabin. And everything that was more related to the theme itself was kind of more my part. So typically one thing that came really early was the DLO on the side that was lighting yeah. because yes. we had this signature from the production car. And to us, it was almost kind of natural that the best way to highlight it was actually to highlight it, like literally. And... So something we did was to really stretch it towards the rear because the production car still has a standard C pillar. So you yes. still have a lot of meat around it. But in the case of the concept car, um, we kind of erased that C pillar and stretched the window almost to the maximum. So you had this kind of wraparound thing and then the DLO was really standing out from that. But it was really a great experience because it was the first time for me working on a concept car. I had the possibility to go in Italy um, when this was kind of still a thing, right? And, and learn from these fantastic guys over there that, I mean, just uh, mastering this, this, this business. Like, I mean, most of the people you invited already told you about how these guys are talented. I mean, yeah. what they can do with their hands, literally, is unbelievable. And discovering it for the first time was really a huge thing for me. And I was also very happy about it because I had this chance to work on a project that still was on the motor show when this was still a thing also. <laughs> but And and so th were, you, were you an intern at the time, Michael, or... or um, what, what was your situation? What was your situation there? It was a little bit special because I actually did three, I mean, two and a half internships at Kia. Um, because the way it worked uh, at the school I was is that normally you have to do two internships in the last two years. Both of them were six months. So what I did was that I had the chance to have the first one in fourth year at Kia. And I really enjoyed the place. I liked it a lot. And I basically asked to them if it was possible to do a second internship, but a voluntary one in three months in between the two years, which they offered me. And when I came at the end of this second internship, I basically asked them, is there a chance to come for the last one for my kind of degree internship? And at the time, Grégory Guillaume, the head of the European Design Center, said to me, yeah, you can come back, but you will come back to start working, not to be an intern. Oh, wow. So they, they trusted me enough to hire me before I got graduated. I had a kind of 
you know, fake title to make it kind of legal. But from the moment I started my last internship, I was actually already working fully. And then when did you, did you have to go back and finish or were you one of those people that managed to skip doing that? (laughs) So no, luckily for me, the last internship I have to do is at the last part of the year. So Ah, you can start it in February and you get the graduation in December. So within that time period, you can try to squeeze your six month internship. And I pretty much started in February like officially and you know continued working so it was a bit strange actually around november because i had to start to think about preparing something for my degree so we took an old project that i did in my second internship polished it a bit painted the model and this was it basically (laughs) amazing yeah that's brilliant no do you remember what their model was um, so the model itself was, uh, was a project that I never really shared. It was basically a sports car. Um, okay. But the, the, the topic of the sports car was to say that back then, you know, Kia didn't have like a huge organ bank when it comes to sporty vehicles. So mm-hmm. I based it on the platform of, of uh, a Rio kind of footprint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And tried to play with the parts, so it was like hyper lightweight, aerodynamic, and everything. And it had this kind of very um, product design uh, touch to it, which was something that I felt was very key back then. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that that was it basically. I, you know what? Now, now that you say that, I've never actually thought about that. You know, it's like you don't a lot of you see a lot of uh, students sketching Kia stuff and Hyundai stuff as well, but you never see, I don't, to my, to my knowledge, I don't think I've ever seen a Kia hypercar sketch, for example. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I haven't seen Hyundai either apart from the concept in the Gran Turismo game. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the 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 brand really had this image back then of being this kind of very um, clo- mainstream, first of all, but also on the good side in the sense that it was really affordable as a brand. And most of the products we were doing, they had this strength that, that you know, if you enter a dealership, you know you would afford it, that it wasn't like crazy expensive and everything. So yeah. as soon as yeah. you started to touch territory that were elitist by definition, okay. it was kind of missing the point a little bit or you had to be really clever to make it. It's, it's yeah. only since we started with the Stinger that the image started to change a little bit. Even if the right. Stinger was a very uh, approachable uh, product for what it was. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess... I guess the, the 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 people saw Kia really as this kind of obtainable brand. So doing elitist products didn't really make sense back then. I think now it's changing. Yeah, I mean it's but it's always fun to to imagine something like that in a completely um, hypothetical scenario. You know, especially when like you would never, from the point of view, is that you would never associate those two things together. Yeah. So if you ignore, like, for a moment that you know it is a it is an, a, a quote unquote elitist thing, mm-hmm. and you just think think about the fact that you usually associate Kia Hyundai with this kind of um, um, ac- accessibility, as you said, you know, and and they've got some ni- they've got some really really nice products now. I mean, the the Ionic, for example, is like, I mean, that's a really really cool thing and i'm sure there's going to be a, a string of other um cars to come out of um ba- both of those brands i'm sure yeah yeah um but you always but the thing is you always kind of do associate it with sensibility and like usually i mean a family sort of scenario so it's quite yeah. interesting to 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 explore what a i don't know a, a, a an electric race car, for example, would be, or yeah. a hypercar would be for, for Kia, for example. I think I think it will it will come soon because, like you say, 
the two brands are now entering territories where you see the Ionic 5 and also the EV6. They are yes. expensive products, but not because exactly, they, yeah, but but yeah. not because they are placed that way. Just because the technology and everything and the switch to electric vehicles make all the products more expensive. So yeah. they are really now in a logic where there is no limit, and you will see that in the upcoming years they. Yeah. They don't refuse themselves anything anymore. And this is yeah, what is yeah, really nice yeah. because I can tell you from the moment I started there in 20 so the first time I was there was in 2013 for my first internship and the moment yeah. I left the progress they've made is absolutely incredible and I and yeah. I really think that they can do any type of product now. It's always a question of image, I guess, still. Yeah. Yeah. But content-wise and everything, there is there is nothing really that blocks them. Did you know what? Also, I, 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 I not only do I keep bringing this up, but I also keep saying that I keep bringing this up. But I'm going to do that again now. Go for it. And just I imagine, like you know, we like where, like for example, the Twizzy. I still think that there was such a fucking great idea and to to a large extent i think it was pretty well executed as well oh yeah um and i just i wonder like where are those sort of cars you know given the obvious issues that we've got with traffic and tight congestion cities and like you know where's the exploration to go like you know maybe there could be um if there was cars banned in the city that there could be a designated area for for lighter vehicles like this yeah and and I and again, I think that that would be such a great fit for a, a brand like Kia, for example. Oh yeah, it absolutely. Could be, it could be really, really cool. That I mean, to some extent, the pop was kind of touching also on that topic. This very small, compact, hyper urban vehicle. It, it was all yes. about it. Yes. But I think sometimes, as cool as a product can be, if all the ingredients are not together. And it also comes about, you know, the context and everything that goes around. Some yeah. customers are just not ready for it. And I think this, yeah. is, this is where sometimes you get a bit of this, this disconnection between what we think is good as designers and what the, 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 the customers are actually ready for. And like you say, the Tweezy, I think, is a really cool and clever object. Yeah. But somehow... It was a combination of thing that, you know, was was probably blocking people for it. Maybe it was the price. Maybe it was the fact that it was still very limited or it didn't have, like you said, like a specific terrain, sort of. Um, but I think, I think with that car specifically, um, I think it was just, you could argue that it was probably premature. I mean, I don't know what it cost brand new but i mean you see them second hand now and they actually you know not a lot of money you mm -hmm. know not i mean i think you i've i've seen them advertised for like four or five thousand euros you know yeah and uh and i just think that 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 i mean i don't even know what the deal is with uh with the charging and all that sort of stuff is um or even if it is electric i think it's electric isn't it yeah full electric it is yeah absolutely yes. so so like i mean it's something i just like that car, I don't know when it came up, but it was a good five, I don't know, maybe even more. No, probably like seven years ago now. Yeah, I think, or, I think the first the first concept car for it was like 2009, if I'm not saying. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I'm talking absolutely rubbish now. So even more. Yeah. And I just think that, like, could you, honestly, can you imagine the attention that a brand like, Polestar, for example, mm -hmm. if they create, if they created something like that, yes, every fucker and his dog would be like, I want one of those things. But I, yeah. but, but it does, but it doesn't just, not just that brand. I think, I think, I think if any brand did it right, and mm -hmm. and the Korean brands could do do it as well, it would get a lot of attention. And and I keep bringing this up because I, I just wonder where those vehicles are. You know, I also. I know like there was a period around I want to say 2008 2007 maybe where a lot of the um the Japanese brands like Toyota for example were having they had a lot of these like one person pod 
vehicles. That oh, were, yeah. Basically, yeah. and and like, you know, when you look at them now, some of them are pretty funny and, 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 and like, obviously it's, it's probably, it's not going to, like, we're probably not going to have vehicles that are going to look like that. But the point was that they were already thinking about that sort of like micro mobility in a way that it's not just a buzzword for a smart car, you know, or uh, these fucking scooters that are littered everywhere. Yeah. Um, I st- I, I can't, I don't understand why. Well, I do understand why actually, because it's, um, um, because of what you've just said, you know, on the one hand, we, um, I think there is sometimes a disconnect about what we want to do in design versus what the people are ready for. But at the same time, there's also the flip side to that coin is that the customer often doesn't know what they want until they That's see true. it. But I think I, I kind of always take this analogy um, with food, right? I just think that sometimes when you go out and you expect to have a pizza, if someone comes to you with this piece of tofu with some red things on it, you don't have a clue what it is, and say, yes, this is a pizza. You're just going to be like, no way, man. I'm just going to go for what was I was expecting. But if you're right, in the mood, right. for, but if you're in the mood for some reason to try something yeah. different or yeah. to try something yeah, yeah. new, then you will you will give it a go. But with everything that's happening and the uh, uncertainty of, of the car market nowadays, as much as I respect this kind of, of, of vehicles, because I think it's, it's, it's absolutely brave to come on the market with things like this. And when you know how it's complicated for, for a car manufacturer to actually change their mindset and their thinking to come up with this kind of, of object and really make it happen. So as much as I respect it, I think the current context is probably more aspiring customers to stay a bit safe. And I think Tesla shows it really well because when you see the design of this vehicle, the exterior shape of it, it is very consensual in a way. But I think it's clever in the sense that it's just reassuring. You know, it's like, don't worry, it's a car. We know how to do it. And then comes the technological mastery, the thing that really have this extra X factor on top of it. It's almost like your bit of teriyaki sauce on your pizza, you know? It's like you're going to go all the time to it because it has this X factor, but you have a safe base behind that just makes you confident about the thing. And I think this is a bit the problem sometimes. When you want to break too much things in the same time, it could be too much. If, If people are not ready and in the mood, it could be a bit too much sometimes. I think I think you're totally right. However, on the subject of Tesla, for example, I think you 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 bang on the money uh, with your with regard to your analogy. But you know they've also shown that we want to push the boat out and we want to do some outrageous shit. Yes, and I think that. Um, I think that that their designs, like for example, it started off with the Model S, mm-hmm. and I like for me now, if I look at that, it's like pretty. I mean, I never thought it was that great, you know, in terms of a piece of, in terms of a piece of design. That said, they were also trying to at the time establish their own uh, language, and I think by and large they needed to be relatively conservative, mm-hmm. so that in the beginning, as you said, you know, they're basically reassuring everybody, like, look, this is a you know, it's a, it's a very sensible, um, design. It's not outrageous and you know, whatever. And you, 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 you almost disarming everybody to go like, okay, we trust this enough to at least look at it. And then they go inside, they experience it and they go like, I'm fucking hooked on this shit. I'm into it, you know? And they say, I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've obviously don't own one, but, um, um, uh, you know, they, the, the analogy that people use, a lot with regard to those products, their products is that after getting out of that car and back into a normal car, it feels so, it feels so stupid almost, you know, it feels Mm. like you're whatever it is that you're driving. I don't know, whatever. It just, it just feels like so dumb. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's coming back to what I said before that you, you're missing this X factor again. Because yes. you you find you found that soft spot that really speaks to you for whatever reason, 
And of course, if you're leaving it for something else, then you will always get back to it. I think you could also compare it to some aspect like the BMW 1 Series driver back when it was a rear-wheel drive vehicle. When they would go back in a front-wheel drive vehicle, they would miss this X-Factor thing somehow. Yeah. I, yeah. I see it a bit that way. It's just that the, um, the, the parameters are different. You're looking for something different. But I'm, I'm really curious to see how the Cybertruck is going to do on that note, because I guess this is what you're referring to for this more brave and, and a- approach. Yeah. But the way I see this thing is that to me, it's almost the first Tesla to be a niche within, within the thing. Because I, I think they yeah. aim for all the other cars to be more mass market vehicle, you could say. But this is now, I'm sure they still aim for that, but I, I think in this, it, they, they try. They see if they can make it, if they, it can happen. In, in a way, I think, why not? You know, their customers are probably ready for this kind of thing because the brand image is there. Well, they've shot, I mean, they, they not only do, I mean, they, they've, they've proved that because they've had, I mean, God knows how many pre-orders for that thing. Yeah. But, you know, they've obviously got to deliver on what they, um, what they said they were going to deliver. And there's all sorts of questions wh- whether or not, you know, you can homologate something, especially in Europe, um, uh, compared to what they've advertised. You know, if, if there's going to be, um, if it's going to be as close as what they say it is. Mm. America is a different story. I'm sure they'll have no problem doing it. But I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, I, I also, I, I, I wonder, I wonder what is truly up that brand sleeve within you know the their next batch of of uh their 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 normal range you know because i think that they they had to kind of play it safe not like for a while actually because it wasn't that they had all these new vehicles coming out i mean the model 3 was the first one now it's the model y and there, every single time, there's been this big question mark. You know, number one, are they going to be able to deliver what they said they were going to be able to deliver? Yeah. And are these cars really that great? And if you were, and and also there's like, I don't know, production um, panel gap uh, um, issues, as, and and you know, I've. I've anonymous friend the lonely car designer who makes these beautiful memes about it (laughs) you know those those are real things but they've also shown that people by and large you know it's kind of secondary almost ironically in this in in this day and age but i think that i i i want the it's a really long fucking wind uh way of of saying like i wonder if they've kind of internally gone okay we've We've done. We played it safe in our design language for so long now. Let's start like pushing the boat out with the rest of the range. I don't know. It, it's going to be very interesting to see what, how that all unfolds. Yeah, yeah. I think I think with the Cybertruck, they are fully exploring. I mean, I see it almost as a concept car. I mean, like you say, it's it's not not yet a production car. So technically, it is a concept car. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. But I think with the Im- image they have, and also what you say that people are ready to forgive some stuff, they can test it um, on 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 selling it basically. But this is, I think, also this is something that is very um, trendy currently. I would say that what what we consider as quality in design is not so relevant anymore. And honestly, that doesn't really surprise me when you know that you live in a world where something like Squid Game is a standard. Because that thing 10 years ago, you would have all of the association of mothers being like, what are you showing to our kids and everything? And, and, you know, being absolutely shocked by it. Nowadays, it's okay. You know, Game of Thrones are also like this. Well, dude, I, I'm again. I was going to quote Game of Thrones the minute you said Squid Game because, again, I must be one of the only people on the planet that hasn't seen either of those two series. So I don't necessarily understand the, the Squid Game analogy. I mean, K- Game of Thrones, I didn't watch it. I just know that it that it was really pushing the limit. But Squid Game, I did because it reminded me of Korea a little bit. <laughs> yes. And uh, no, it, it is violent. I mean, it. Ah, okay, okay. It okay, is. It is yeah. very violent. You see quite a lot of blood. 
I mean, some people would say that it's okay, but if you step back a bit and compare it to some other series, like I said, from 10 years ago, I think it reached a, a peak, really. Probably it's already a standard in there in Korea because these guys are much more open-minded than we are. But when yeah. I see that something like this can be accepted in Europe... I think it shows just that people don't really care about being shocked. And I think also this is one of the reasons why uh, Hyundai and Kia uh, are so successful nowadays, because they are very brave also with their styling. If you see the, the Tucson, for example, it's very well executed, but it's, 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 very, it's really brave. And I think people love it for that. And they will never look at if the surface is connecting well there, if the radius is perfect ah, all yes, the way. Yeah, yeah. You know. Sorry, yeah, there are, I know. Which, yeah, okay, okay. I'm with you now. I, I, I drew a blank because I keep <laughs> seeing that car, and I, every time I see it, I'm like, "Well, that's some, that's pretty fucking cool." Yeah. And uh, but I and I always forget it's the Tucson because the previous one was kind of completely different. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But actually, I really like the new one. I mean, yes, if you look at the body side, you know, from being stuck in a design studio for so long, you start to pick apart and say, like, this doesn't connect with that and all this superfluous bullshit. And it's fucking irrelevant, really. I mean, you know, I... I yeah, I I think um, we, we sometimes... It's the problem... The problem within design specifically is that so often you are unable to zoom out. Yes. You constantly, you constantly analyzing these little things, which are very, very important to make a product beautiful and to finish it off properly. I, you know, I, I, I'm the worst than anybody, but um, I also recognize that because of this, it's so difficult to zoom out and see the bigger picture. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's going to be, in the upcoming years, it's going to be a major thing because I think that it's our job. We are designers at the end, so we should deliver something that is on a professional level. So it's not like putting back in question the quality of execution because this has yeah. to happen anyway. Yes, yes. But I think... If, if your brand image is not like hyper solid, um, you will have to think statement first to make an impact. And if you don't have this ingredient, your car can be the best in terms of execution and quality. It will be smashed by the competitors that will make, that will make it all day old fashioned like this. And you see the competition is tough. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the product development are getting shorter. So we will have to really be more brave in our designs. Quali design execution quality has to stay how it is. It's, it's given, like I said. But the statement will be a very important part, I think. It always was to some extent, but I think it will be like yeah. clearly defining in the future. And yeah, when you see absolutely. the best sellers in Europe, for example, um, looking at the Tucson, but also the 3008, these vehicles, they really have this thing that when you're a customer and you look at your car, it's like, that was worth the money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I think yeah, you're right. Well, I Listen, I, 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 before, before I forget, I'm going to jump around a little bit because that's how I am and I'm all over the place but i want to i want to just ask you a little bit about isd because yes i i've referenced i've talked about that place well quite a few times i don't know if i've actually managed to speak to anybody in depth about the um about the course mm -hmm. what i've said in the past i've and i've uh, multiple other design managers and digital managers will second this is that the graduates, in my opinion, that have come out of that place are incredibly well-rounded in terms of they are almost ready to just slot straight into a design team. And yes. I've, what, I've heard, what I've heard is that they, simu they the, 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 what makes that place particularly unique is that they've, they've, they've been able to simulate a working 
design environment probably better than most design schools have. Mm, exactly. I mean, I would say this is the biggest strength of that school. I mean, I obviously didn't do any other school, so it's I can only compare from, from what I see from the outside. But this is definitely a thing. Very early in your studies, you get this kind of team simulations. So the way it works is that when you start in, I think it starts from the second year, it might have changed a bit, but back then it was like from the second year, you would do team projects. And if you were in the second year, you were like a normal designer and the people that were in fourth and fifth year, they would act as managers. So oh, sometimes okay. sometimes it's, it could be kind of difficult because the difference of level is quite huge. So some people that don't have the manager thing, they would just take over. And so it, sometimes it was quite difficult for, for the younger ones. But if it's done well, properly, which happens very often, you can see super well-rounded projects coming out of the school. And they put a really high level of, em of, of um, um, expectations yeah, on everything that is related to the storytelling and the concepts. So the projects are these long projects, we call them. Uh, they are divided in three parts. And each part takes the same amount of time. Usually, I think it's, it's like five, six weeks, something like this. First one is analysis only. So you have to deliver the strategy that is going to go with your project. Second part is creativity. So sketching, you know, theme development and everything. And third part is development. So usually this corresponds to the, the moment where we turn it into 3D. I think this has changed a little bit now that the designers are more and more able to do 3D themselves. But before, this is where we had the... Um, the digital team coming with us and start to develop the product, I mean, the designs as, as 3D models. And it was really nice because you then learn really early to deal with other jobs, literally, and try to learn to speak their language. But also you learn how to deal with other persons and their expectations and what they, what they want this project to be in their portfolio, you know. And... I found that super interesting and I learned a lot from the first project I did when I was a, a, a younger one, but I also learned a lot when I had to manage two other projects and yes. um, these two projects are super good memories to me because the teams were really nice and um, especially the one, we've done a project, um, a mini and the mindset of that thing was just amazing. We really put ourselves in this kind of bubble. We had the room that was organized like a small design studio. Wow. And we've, we've just tried to, to be like guys from Mini, having this kind of second degree about everything we were doing. And that was just really nice. And it, I think it, 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 it gave to the project everything that it is about at the end. I I've got to be honest with you. Right? I I was I I recently um, so I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an example of this in a second. But I I've never. I'm going to contradict everything I've ever said on this podcast about teamwork because obviously you know what we do is by definition hardcore teamwork, and it's it's you know without that there's nothing you know. Yes. But I I particularly struggled with team projects in a, um, in a university setting. I mean, but I think, I think as well, it was because it wasn't really well orchestrated. It wasn't really run well and it wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't, it, it was never really, ex, ex, um, it wasn't, yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't organized well. It wasn't simulated in the way that you're talking about. Yeah. You know? It was just kind of like, you know, um, at one stage, I mean, we, I think in the third year, we, I mean, there were group projects along the way, but they were more like you just, or every, every step of the way, you just felt like a oh, fuck of, I'm ticking this box just to get through this module. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think, but, the, but the projects themselves as well were also so uninspiring. And then, you know, you could find yourself with a group of people that are uninterested or they're boring, or you just don't get on with them or, just like 
I don't know. Or you just, yeah, you just don't click with them. And then it can, it can really screw up the whole dynamic. Yeah. And, uh, and I also have a real fucking pro not that I was this, um, you know, this, this creative genius or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, quite the opposite actually. But, um, you know, at, at university specifically, and I think it's design education, which is, is, uh, is like this creative education. I mean, by and large is, is like this where, you know, we all encourage to kind of give feedback on each other's work, yes. which is fine, which is, I mean, it's not only is it fine, it's, it's kind of necessary to a point where I struggle is when some guy or girl, whatever, I'm trying not to use derogatory terms and being <laughs> unkind or whatever, but I can say that because it's not anybody specific, but you know, some fucking idiot who hasn't done anything or is inexperienced or is just like, just shows up on the day and is like, you know, whatever. Um, he wants to come along and now give you his um, five cents on your project that you are in the middle of, you know, you haven't even finished it yet. <laughs> and and you've basically got to sit around and keep quiet and listen to every fucking ball bag give you his five cents on 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 your project and i like i'm all for like i don't mind somebody giving me feedback sorry my light just blown out there i don't <laughs> mind somebody giving me feedback once the project's done yeah um and if it's going to be during the project then like i kind of wanted to be somebody with a level of experience and that's maybe not the right attitude to have but that's generally how i take it sorry michael i i just I'm, i know this thing is blown out um but i don't know it will settle down in a second yeah it, no it's, problem it's not like gonna be oh there we, there we go so um i think like you know but the way it's from what I understand and the way that you've just described it, the setup that they've got at ISD is, is, is really healthy in that respect. Yeah. And I think to, to your point earlier on about you mentioning uh, the digital team, that's another thing that they've done as well yes. is that they've actually got dedicated courses mm. for becoming a digital modeler yeah. or for becoming a visualization artist. Mm -hmm. And again, that's something that's pretty, pretty unique in itself i mean in fact bar i know that there's a modeling course in sweden um uh where they you know you can you can do that over a, a two-year period but apart from apart from that and isd i don't know how many other colleges have like a dedicated um course specifically for that so i i can't tell you really i mean i know that it's pretty unique um and I mean, these guys that, that come out from ISD, from, from the digital team, these guys are precious, really. I mean, the, the thing that is great is that they start as designers, really. So they have this background of trying to understand what we were talking about and this kind of big picture, if you want. And on, I think it's only after the second year that they specialize in digital. And then they start to develop themselves. And the thing that is really great is that as we come with our projects on the side and with our designs, they can really try to be part of it also. And the two projects I worked on as a team when I had to lead it, I took these guys straight away with us because normally they come only at the last phase. But I, I said back then, look, you have to be part of it from the beginning. So... Everybody in the team had exactly the same motivation for it. And as these guys were really familiar with our concerns and our feelings, it was very easy to communicate. I mean, like you say, it also depends from who, who you end up with. Obviously, not everybody is good for this kind of things. But yeah. I was lucky enough that for the, 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 the two projects I, I was kind of in charge of, it was... It was really great with these guys. And yeah, the, the, the digital guys from the ISD, they are, they, are, they are really, really good profile. So our, like our, uni our university, for example, was like they, um, 
I mean, everybody basically just studies car design or, yeah. or, or like, okay, or derivative thereof. So it's either like product design, transport design, car design. And, uh, but fundamentally, I mean, the first three years are all the same. In the final year, you pick a specialism. Mm -hmm. But, um, and everyone is supposed to, not that everybody did, but everybody's supposed to do a 3D module and, uh, and create a, a 3D model themselves yeah. for their final for the final product project. So yes. that would be either either a clay model, so physical or um or digital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh and then, you know, some people um, you know, uh, some people become designers and other people become modelers, but they like it's kind of it would be better, I think to have a setup like ISD where, yeah. where, where, where like people can kind of choose earlier on and they say, like, actually, I want to focus on, you know, visualization, for example, mm -hmm. because then, then you can, you can double like, you know, there's a lot of shit that you need to get good at, yeah. especially now with the, like, every, like the skills that their kids have got is fucking outrageous. It's oh, insane. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I, I became a digital modeler. I could barely use alias when I finished university. In fact, I, I mean, it was, I was really, really bad at it to really? the point where I thought, yeah, like I, I didn't think that I'd ever be able to use it. Like I was that I was, and I'm not, I'm not romanticizing it now. Like I'm telling you now, I was fucking terrible, but it's largely due to the lack of, um, of, of good, educating on using that program you know yeah at yeah. the time at the time there was um there was one there was one clay technician um who who was was pretty good at alias mm -hmm. but he wasn't fucking teaching alias and this is yeah. the thing you know and then it would like some tutor who had fired it up one once or twice would come in and and it was just so half assed so and it was frustrating for me because I was like a 3D guy. Like I, that was where my strength lies. So yeah. like my, taking a piece of foam, carving something out of it and clay. I love clay. In fact, at one stage I wanted to be a clay modeler, but I just didn't know oh. how to do it because, because there was no, well, there was no clear path. You know, it was kind yeah. of like you needed, you needed to know somebody on the inside and I didn't know anybody. And then, then, you know, you, I, I was also very, I, there was so I had so many questions about the industry at the time. It's just so <laughs> partially why I'm doing this because I, you know, at the time I didn't know that, like I didn't even know that something like visualization existed, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, oh. um, and then I just found myself kind of jumping from thing to thing. You know, one minute I was like, I really want to be a designer. And then I was like, and then the next minute I was like, be cool to be a clay modeler. Mm -hmm. And then that didn't happen. And then, uh, anyway so it's but it's not about me it's about you i'm i'm kind of hijacking the conversation sorry but um yeah it was i just i i i'm i think you're the first person that went to isd that um i can actually talk to about that yeah. on on camera because i had we had quite a few um people yeah uh interns but then also uh, one or two of them became designers as well um that went to isd and I remember there was one intern that um, his name was Victor. I don't know what his fucking surname is, but an interior designer. Mm -hmm. And he interned in the studio and he was fucking amazing. Like it's not when I, and when I say that, and, and I don't say that easily, especially with interns, because there are guys that have got, like can do these beautiful sketches and like, you know, there's so many other things that are missing in their, their, repertoire you know whether that be being able to communicate with other people um understanding like just how to behave in a professional setting mm -hmm. not that i'm mr fucking professional i'm quite again quite the opposite but this particular guy <laughs> his ability to not only have a clear idea but to the the the, the information that he gave to myself and whoever else was working on a on the project that he was working with he was just so fucking organized in in what in the in the input that he gave us and the way that he managed the whole thing 
I was just so fucking impressed by it. And I was like, this guy is like, you know, he's going to fucking go places <laughs> and he's not. And he, and he basically, I think he, he, he worked for a year Mm-hmm. And he quit the he quit the business altogether. I don't know what he's doing now, but oh. just he'll be but he'll be fucking great at anything. But the point was that you know the 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 you know the general um, level of competence that I've seen from that school was very impressive. So I'm, I'm always intrigued to hear. Yeah. About it. No, I mean honestly, there is there is always things you have to say about your school where you would not be happy, right? Because there is always yeah, small things here and there. But from the ISD, I can't be thankful enough uh, about everything that was related to the methodology. The methodology sorry. So yes, everything yes, related yes. to this, I have it only thanks to what I learned at the ISD. The fact of having the discipline that when you work on something, you always try to make the effort to look at the big picture. And I'm still using it today because I'm, I'm already at Kia, but still at Ford. I'm involved in quite a lot of strategic things because of this, because I, I just can't be a sketch monkey and a no-brainer. Some people yeah, are super yeah. good at this. They are just like sketch killers. And I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere near their levels. But for me, it's like, if I don't know why, I'm struggling a little bit, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think, always need yeah. to frame it somehow. And this, this really comes from the school. I need to know what it is about to understand the challenges and what it means for the company and everything. And then I'm fully ready to start to sketch. Michael, has the has the how long has the course been going for? Uh, the, the the overall ISD course, the, the, what you have to make to get the degree, you mean? No, no, no. Like, how long has it has the course been around for? Because it oh. was some it, it was a school that, um, honestly, I think I found out about it for the first time. I mean, it was maybe six years ago, you know, I, I sort mm. of saw, saw maybe, but not even, yeah, maybe, maybe six years ago before that, it was like, I'd never heard of it before, you know? And I, I, um, I mean, I don't say, I don't want to say bullshit there because I don't remember the exact date of the creation. No, but I mean, but is, it, has it, is it, is it an old, I mean, it's not, it's not an old school like Fort Sam, for example. Oh, it's no. not being going. No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's no. pretty new, right? It's I think, I, relative- think it, it, I think it really started to shine somewhere in the late two thousands. I would say when the first yeah. name out of school started to pop out, and you know these guys were looking at saying, "Oh, we need to aim for this level to get our degree, right?" Um, yeah, I think the I think the school itself is around um, twenty thirty years old, something like this. I would say okay. um, it, it's it's very recent. It's very young. I mean, Strat College in France, it's much older. Um, yes, it, it's it's a very young one. Yeah, definitely. And this is probably why they they try to have this this approach that is more complementary to the to the other schools, really. Well, yeah, and I think that I think that also in this situation, you you um, they aren't necessarily um, tied down by an old legacy, you know, and, yeah. and a group of established professors that that don't want to change things because you know that's that's not the way we we do things around here. You know? mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You you could feel it. They were more more free on that aspect, and they were not afraid to try different angles on how to, to, to touch the transportation design topic. But who, listen, who's the, is there like one guy that's kind of in charge there? Who is this Rusak guy? Is that, is it, is that anything to do with ISD or is that something else completely? Uh, no, he, he was like, uh, he is a teacher there. Um, okay. So he's not like, I mean, I don't know because this keeps changing and I don't know his exact situation, but he, he's basically teaching over there. Okay. Okay. And is he, is he kind of, what is he the, the 
the one of the main instruments in setting up the the curriculum and and the way they they do things or is he just um I mean you're not sure I mean no I'm I'm not sure exactly because again this changed quite a lot because the ISD has moved to different hands with with the years and right now I mean since a couple of years they are in a new building um I just saw the 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 very beginning of that new building actually and then it changed from one direction to another one I mean the persons that were really in charge but usually these guys, like uh, Serge, basically, the one you're mentioning, he is, I would say, part of the core team of the guys that are here okay, for really okay, a long time. Okay. And usually okay. whoever is in charge, these guys are always consulted to define, you know, what the content is going to be about and everything. Okay. Um and and what but does he he's got a does he have a design consultancy as well? Yeah, I think he, I think he, yeah, he has his okay, own business. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. And, okay. Listen, so we as I said we're going to jump around a little bit. So I want you to tell me No, fuck it. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go with univ Okay, we're going to stick with university for a second. Yes. Can you tell me about um the time that you received a a visit from <laughs> From Patrick. <laughs> oh man, that was a that was a big one. Um, well, basically, the thing that happened. Um, I, oh, sorry. And and before you get into it, like just cl like clarity, who we talking about? Yes. So we're talking about Patrick Lequemon, right? So the former head of design for for Renault. I mean, do I really need to introduce him? <laughs> no, 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 absolutely, absolutely not. No, we know who he is. Yeah. So basically, I I owe I owe him a lot, really. And um, how much in money? Oh, I'm not sure you can count that in money. But if I am <laughs> where I am today, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's mostly thanks to him. I mean, I had great support also from my from my family, my girlfriend, and all the others. But he kind of showed me really the path and yeah at some point it ended up like that we had a meeting with him in my student flat which again shows how how passionate this guy is and absolutely not afraid to come down to you to you know just share stories and everything the story with this was that basically um before i i went to the isd um, I, I've, I lost a little bit contact with him for a while just before and I managed to found him again and so I was preparing the, 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 the entry contest of the ISD at that moment and he said to me oh you know what just come to my place in Paris and you show me what you prepared and we talk about it so we went with my parents and my girlfriend to his place in Paris I mean fabulous house lots of memorabilia as like I can as, imagine. As a passionate guy, you're just like, you don't know where to look at. And so we spent like, I think, half a day, like the afternoon, and I showed him, I prepared this kind of portfolio. I mean, it was a naive version of a portfolio, let's say, because I had no clue what it was, but I just wanted to show who I was, what I wanted to do, this job and everything. And he had a look for it and everything. And on the tone of the joke and the end of the, mo of the moment we had together, he said, you know what? If it really doesn't work out, tell to the guys that if they take you, I come to do like a course to, 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 to the ISD. But it was a joke, right? And I thought, okay, yeah, you know, I keep it somewhere in my back pocket. I will not use it, but, you know, it's fun. So I went there, did my entry contest. It went super well. And actually, Serge Rissac was one of the guys that interviewed me. They were really happy about my profile. I was like super intimidated because it was really the first time for me to get an actual foot in this world. And I was expecting that everybody would have such a high level on every kind of aspect. So I was like, really, I hope it's going to work, right? So they were really enthusiastic. And they said, yeah, we take you and everything, no problem. And... When the, the, the interview finished, I said, oh, by the way, uh, Patrick told me that if you're interested, he would come to make a course. And guess what? He actually did. He came at the end of the year. So he contacted them right after and said, look, 
I know that you guys talked about it, so I'm going to come. And they offered him basically to be the president of the degree uh, 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 jury. So that year, the students uh, had him as, the, as the, the, the leader of the jury. And so in the middle of the days um, where it was happening, because the jury happens on, I think it's two or three days, on an evening, he said, what should we do? And I said, well, if you want, you can come by my place and I will make you some food and we can talk. And he said, yeah, of course, let's do it. So he came to my, you know, proper shitty student flat. I did, I, <laughs> I did, I did something, something crappy for food, honestly. It, he was just such a gentleman to say, yeah, it's, it's good, you know. Do and, you remember what it was? <sighs> It must have been... Foie gras. I th no, I think it was noodles. I think it was cheese noodles, something like this. Something, wow. that, something that at least I knew I mastered a little bit. Like <laughs> proper student food. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally, totally. But I gave, I gave all my heart in it, right? <laughs> awesome. And, and yeah, it was literally sitting at my, at my desk and started to tell me stories about this project, this project and everything. And at some point... I just said to him, do you mind if I actually call some of my friends to join us? And he said, no, go for it. So I called back then three of my, of my good friends and I said, look, you have to come now. I can't tell you why, but you have to come now to my flat. And so my three friends came, opened the door and Patrick just came to them and said, hi, I'm Patrick. And they just looked what? at him, what? saw the flat behind and they were like, what's happening right now? <laughs> Dude, that is the fucking coolest story I ever heard, like ever. I can't, I literally cannot imagine any other, I mean, I can't imagine another design director doing that, you know? Yeah. Like to, yeah. to, to really come into, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's such a cool thing to hear. And I have to say, like, it's also like fucking really much respect to you as well for just going like, I you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to invite him back to my, my student, uh, uh, digs because you could have gone like, Oh fuck, I'm going to take some of my, my student loan or money or whatever and yeah. go and, uh, go to a restaurant because, you know, it's going to be more comfortable and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to feel less awkward, but that's fucking really, really cool that you did that. That's amazing. And also for calling your friends as well, because I would have probably told them to all fuck off. I would have, I um, would have kept them to myself. Probably. Uh, no, really. I mean, something like this, I mean, for me, it's really important that when something is really passionate, you, you have, you have to share it. There is no yeah. way you keep yeah, this yeah. for yourself and something yeah. that big you know, these guys, I was working with some of them on a project at, at the same time. And I thought, you know, if, if I want them to be at the top level and super yeah, no, enthusiast, true, true. you know, yeah, 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 I, I yeah, need, no, to, it's I need true. to share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that was great thinking, actually. And it was, yeah, very, very smart because that, that's going to, I mean, that's going to fire the shit out of anybody. It's going to fire anybody up, you know. I, mm. I literally, I, I mean... Dude, if I if I look back on it now and I, I I feel so bad when I hate on it, but like, you know, I I in four years mm -hmm. at university, I think, you know, I can count. I mean, I want to say I can count on my hand, but not even that much. I think we had like three talks and by by various designers, but and two of them by, were by the same guy, who yeah. by the way was fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. But I just, for me, especially looking back on it now, you know, I just think like it's, it's kind of unforgivable really on the university's part because, you know, you, you talking about, you know, like Coventry is in like the equivalent of Detroit mm -hmm. or once upon a time was, you know, it was like the motor city of, of the UK. Yeah. So you've got, you've got Jaguar there, you've got Land Rover, you've got Aston Martin, Bentley had a had a satellite studio there and like um and GM once upon a time as well and you couldn't get any of those fucking people in to come and speak to your students yeah you know, it's, it's like so so the to turn it into positive it's 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 mind but I can't 
yeah, it's mind blowing that you guys that you had that opportunity. It's incredible, and I think it's fucking awesome that he did that. But I mean, Patrick is really. I mean, for when it comes to sharing, he is absolutely fantastic. He is never afraid of of going somewhere and start to talk about his experience and everything and he he also doesn't put a distance like he starts to talk to you like you just his friend he doesn't care He's, it's amazing because i wouldn't i would never i mean from the outside look i would never i mean i obviously i don't know him at all mm. but i would never have thought that about him i would think that he would be very much like, you know, I'm up here and, you know, you need to, you know. No, you know, he would, absolutely I, I, not. I never, it's that, uh, pff, amazing. I mean, amazing. Um, um, amongst other, he has this talent to always make you comfortable. Wow. I mean, I never had him Dude, as a manager, a, but I mean, yes, as, as yes. a friend, he always makes you comfortable. So listen, Michael, so now we get into the other part of this <laughs> and tell us how you, how you became acquainted with him in the first place. <sighs> so basically that, that started almost as every car designer story. I was like into cars very early, as long as I can remember. And my parents, they always told me that like when I was three or four years old, I was sort of able to recognize the cars on the street and everything. And th this was just in me somehow. And the thing is, uh, something that got me into the world of car design is that back then we used with my parents to go every Sunday to see my grandmother. And it was a boring moment so to say. <laughs> so what I was doing was that I would go on the, um, on the house and she had this huge box with all of these old magazines that my father has collected through the years. So the, the, um, the, er the oldest one, there were something like early 80s uh, to the current date back then. And as they were French magazines, they were talking a lot about Renault uh, because in the early 90s it was the beginning of this golden era for them with the concept cars and everything like the Laguna concept, Scenic, Raccoon and all these crazy cars and for some reason I just got attracted by it. It just felt so cool as an object and you know they were also super colorful and everything so it captured my attention straight away. But actually, in these, sorry, in these magazines, there were pictures of the concept cars you're talking about. Yes, yes. Okay. And then okay. also from Patrick. So I started okay. to kind of make the connection that he might have something to do with these. I mean, I was five years old, so wow. the brain wasn't completely there, so I couldn't make all the connections. <laughs> but it, it pushed me so much that actually the first sketch sketch i ever did of a car was the laguna concept that i shared on my instagram and somehow yeah i just was into it it was really visceral and luckily for me my father back then was working for a Renault dealership and he was able to 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 get for me these model cars and everything so it was like feeding the beast really and when i was eight years old it became really an obsession and I said once, like, I came down on the morning and I think I dreamt about the car design thing somehow. And I said to my, to my mother, oh, look, I, sh I should just write to him. I, I don't care. It might go nowhere, but I should just write to him. And she said, well, you know, he is a really busy man, obviously. So try, but don't, don't expect really an answer. It, it might not happen. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I need to be good with myself. I need to do it. So, and you, and you, sorry, you were how old now? Eight, eight, eight years old? Or? Eight years old. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I did this letter, super naive letter, and did this crappy sketch of the, of the Renault initial concept uh, from 1995. And I've put it all together. And as my father was working in this Renault dealership, he was able to find the address of the Techno Center that just opened recently. And so we just sent this letter, written on it for Patrick Lequemont, and it went like this. 
And I felt relieved, right? I was like, because at least I've tried. It might not go anywhere, but at least I've tried. And a couple of days passed. And once I came back from school, I will always remember. And my, my mother said to me, you have to sit, right? And I was like, oh my God, what, uh, you know, I, did, I might have done something wrong and I'm about to get punished. And she said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. And then my father came and they both said to me, okay, look, today we've got a call from the secretary of Patrick Lequemont. She said to us, he got your letter and he was touched by it. So he would like to invite you to meet him. And this, from what I can remember, is the first time I cried of happiness. Wow. Because it was just so incredible. I mean, I, I knew already back then that it was just incredible that this happened. And I was so much into this idea that it would not go anywhere, that the fact that actually something happened was something. And actually what happened is that they said, they contacted me later on saying, where do you, when do you want to come? And I said, you know, like a kid, well, you know, my birthday maybe. And they said, yeah, great, we do it. And they sent me this letter here to tell me then that I can come. So this is, oh, this is the actual yeah. letter they sent me from 1999. And we've planned then the, the, the day for the 8th of July, 1999. And, uh, and then it happened. And that was your ninth birthday. Yes, yes. So what they did basically is that they organized me a dream day, really. I, I came on the, on, the, on the morning with my parents and uh, they introduced me to the team. So Patrick wasn't there at that point. But I had a few designers that were kind of in charge of me, if you want to. So um, they but were. You don't re do you remember who, which, who those designers were? Absolutely. I mean, one of them was uh, Gernot Bracht. So unfortunately, I, I lost contact with him, but I know that he was an active uh, teacher in Pforzheim at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was Anthony Villain who's now the head of design of Alpine. Wow. And he was like super young back then. He joined the company not so, not so long at, at, uh, ago at that point. And basically, I was part of the advance team. Um, and I was like, they, they, they created this desk for me. So I had like the, the sharp box, um, the, the, the paper, everything. And they said to me, okay, we give you a task. So your project for the day will be to draw the Alpine of the 21st century. And the rest of the day was just like unbelievable. I mean, a kid in a toy shop. Because drawing this thing was, was part of it. But the rest they prepared me was just unbelievable. Dude, I... I, I don't I don't have any fucking words for that. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I if I think it's just sort of like I don't know. It's one of the most beautiful things that I've heard a company doing for a kid. Like honestly, yeah. I, I think it I think it's amazing. And it's before the days of social media and everything. You yes. know, nowadays they would they would post it everywhere and say like, look how great we are. But the fact that they went to that trouble, and I'm sure he's obviously you know was you know was him that organized that. Um, <clears throat> but and, uh, but something that I didn't know back then is that Patrick had this policy that every single letter that he is getting will always have a reply, even if it's a if if it if it is like a type letter or an automatic answer, if you will, because when he started his career, he sent like hundreds of letter to get a job, and he got free replied. And from that moment, he said, I will always reply. And this is something that I didn't know. And I learned a lot later that actually he's really going through the letters. And obviously, he, he would go through mine at some point. So wow. I, I, could, I, I would still have been able to get an answer. Not that one, but an answer I, I, I could have get one still. Because he said to me also at the time that 
when young designers, they send him letters, he always try to reply, giving a, a small criticize, comment, something. But I was the, the only one back then to send a letter that young. And this is the reason why it caught his attention. I mean, where the f- where did you have, looking back on it now, can you think to yourself like where the initiative came as an eight-year-old to do that? Because I like I dude, I've done some outrageous shit as a kid, but um, <laughs> and and I never ever had a problem approaching people ever. Yeah. But I but the thing like. At that age, I can't say that I would have been able to have had the initiative to do what you did. Like, I didn't, it didn't even, like, okay, number one, I'm not even talking about car design. I didn't even know car design existed till I was, like, mm. you know, much older. Um, but, uh, um, you know, the fact that you, you kind of had some sort of an understanding of, about that there's a system and, and you kind yeah. of, the system is, okay, I can... I can send this letter and it's going to go to this person and this per- this person that's in this magazine and he maybe he's going to open it, but he may be not. Yeah. And then it, by the, by the sounds of things, you kind of had like this, some sort of emotional intelligence at the, the tender age of eight to go, well, at least I'm going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep easy tonight knowing that I've at least tried, you know, exactly. I mean, what if I, well, what fucking eight-year-old has that kind of reasoning? I mean, it's 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 crazy, Mark. I I don't know myself because even back then, uh, from what I know and from what I remember, I was I was a pretty shy guy, really, and very discreet personality. But somehow, the thing about cars always obsessed me, and I was surrounded by magazines, model cars, and everything. And you know, this this Renault thing just was around and. It went to the point I was dreaming about it regularly, like dreaming that I would meet the guy and, you know, like be in the in the team. I think I didn't understood really what car design was, but what I understood is that something confidential about it, this kind of mystery about the design yeah. studio, because, you yeah, know, in yeah, the yeah. words of the magazine, it's always like, oh, the super secret concept car something, yeah, especially yeah, yeah, back yeah. then. So I... Yeah. I understood that and I was starting to sketch on the side because it was just a way to express my obsession about cars, really. And Dude, I think... No, carry on. Sorry. It, it, just, it, it just came naturally, honestly. I, I can't explain it to myself. I just thought I have to try something. I have to try something to make him aware that I'm existing somewhere. Dude, Very naive you know and what, stupid. It, it, well, it's not stupid at all. I, I mean, naive maybe, but I mean, it's it's a stroke of genius. And but I think what's also incredible is that you kind of discovered it at such an early age. Because yeah. I guess the power that that I mean, you were you were kind you were already passionate about it anyway. And I think from the sounds, of, I mean, you can never say how life would have turned out had you not experienced that. Because mm. it sounds like it sounds like you would have, you would have ended up being a designer anyway, but I think the, the power of an experience like that, I mean, my God, like if that didn't have an influence on your career, uh, like in terms of your decision and going like, this is 100% yeah. what I want to do. I mean, what a gift. That's incredible. I mean, That's absolutely incredible. This was really a defining moment because wow. la- later on when I kept uh, the contact with him, he never gave me anything for free, you know. He never said to me like, oh, you know, contact this guy. I called him, you can go. I always wanted to do the things on my side. He was just like this this kind of friend some somewhere. But even the- even though you co- even though you cooked him pasta, he wasn't gonna give you anything. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> That probably have made it worse. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably why he didn't do anything for yeah, you. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. No, but I mean, the, the, the power of that day was really that. Because the thing that was amazing is that they've made me really a designer for the day. Like I had access, wow. full access to the design studio. I saw the clay models of the upcoming cars. They drove me, they drove me on the exterior courtyard in some concept cars. 
Um, so you know, I've seen cars like the the the, the second generation of of, uh, of Megan that came in um, in two thousand and four with this you know very typical chopped rear end, and that was like yeah 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 nine Dude, years that, old. That, that, oh. And that car was is, so yeah. I mean, unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely. And the, yeah. the, the the thing that was really amazing about that day is that. When my parents came back to grab me, they spent some time with the team and the team basically explained them, look, this is a thing. It exists. It is a real job. And you need to do this. You need to do this. Be sure that he is doing that. So my parents had this kind of very uh, long-term vision that that it is a, a real thing and really luckily because then when you move on and start to go in primary school college and everything and when you hear all the time ah oh, but you have to be good in maths because this is probably engineering related and all that i was protected you, i yeah, was really I protected what what do 100 percent i like i can't if I if I think about having that experience at such a young age, number one, just mind blown, and then number two, where you've now you've seen inside, you've seen behind the curtain, you know what it's all about. Yeah. Your parents, your parents had had a, a grown up conversation with other grown ups that were doing a kid's job, but yeah. they knew that it was a legitimate thing, and they knew what you could focus on. So when your ball bag career guidance counselor in <laughs> school says, no, Michael, you need to study physics and science because, you know, there's, there's like, you, you can just tell people like that to, you know, there's the door. I'm not interested. Yeah. Because you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. You know? And if I, I, it, it was really like priceless to have this because as a teenager, you always ask yourself a lot of questions when you move on, you know what I should do and everything. But this is probably the only thing I never questioned. It was always somewhere in the back of my head. I kept always sketching cars on the corner of my, of my you know, homeworks and everything. So it was clear. It was, and, and my parents then supported me fully because there was no question that this couldn't be a thing. No, it is a thing. And now I just have to do the best I can to achieve it. That, that was it, basically. Dude, that, uh, that's so cool. I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally speechless. And I think that, you know, if more kids could experience that, um, which obviously is not possible to do that at scale, but... You know, I it just, I, I just, I, the the power that an experience like that has over a mm. child is just incredible, and and um, it's it goes deeper. It's it's not just it's not just about the brand, but it's it's not about the brand. But of of course, you you know, you're always going to have an affection for it. But mm -hmm. um, but you know, to really see that, I mean, if I think like the closest thing I ever got to that was like. In high school, we had to do, uh, um, like a, a, I can't, it was, it was, you, it wasn't an internship. It was like, but it was like, you know, go and spend a week at a local company, you know? Oh yeah. And, we also had and to like, do this. That kind of bullshit. So like I, like me and a friend went and, uh, I think we spent a week at a computer shop because mm -hmm. we knew the guy and we knew that we basically do nothing there and then we could just go to the beach and surf afterwards. Mm. So like it was just like the, <laughs> the least amount of work possible. But I yeah. just think like the what a wasted opportunity. Um, not that we had a fucking design studio on our doorstep, mm -hmm. but like there's so many other things as well that if it's just like with a bit of foresight and planning – schools in general could just you know um tap into that sort of thing more you know yeah it is it is difficult because especially back then um and even before me like it is a mysterious job really you know and there is a lot of cliche and stereotypes about it now it's it's getting known you know people know roughly what it is about yeah, but thanks to this podcast, I changed the we changed the world. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but this is but this is the thing. I've, it's, it's, I, when I started to to enter the industry and everything, I kind of promised myself always to, if I can do something, 
to educate someone about the fact that it exists and what it is in reality, I will always do it. And this is why I'm, I'm trying from time to time to go back to the ISD to give, to give like workshop to the students or at the moment I'm mentoring um, uh, an intern at Ford also. And I'm, I'm really trying to be on this idea that it is a job, you know, it, it is a real job with all the difficulties that could come with it. It is for sure full of passion, but there is, there is so much about it and everything. And when you educate people about it, it's, it, it really creates real, like, passionate people also. Again, it's back to what I said. You, you always have to share it. It's, it's super important. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so do you have any other interests at all, Michael? <laughs> well, you, if you ask uh, my girlfriend, it's, it's probably a lot about cars. Um, but I'm doing a lot of music also. Oh, really? My, my, well, we've, we kind of quite musical as well. My son, who's not even four, he turns four in uh, April. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, dude, I'm not bullshitting you. Like he's a fucking legit drummer. Like he, he started, he started banging on this drum kit yeah, yeah, yeah. like a year old. And, um, and I, I might've, I might've mentioned it to you, but he, he, he's, he started like after, I don't know, about 18 months old, he started mm -hmm. to develop this like little rhythm and he's just every single day since then he hasn't stopped. So eventually we bought him a drum kit and it got too loud because we live in an apartment. So we got him a, an electric um, kit that we could control. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, he's, his, 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 I say, I mean, he's obviously got something definitely, but his um, raw visceral um, uh, uh, passion for it is there. You know, we don't need to do anything. And nobody, like he, my daughter was exposed to exactly the same thing. Yeah. And he's just, yeah, totally, um, and now he's just obsessed every mm. single day. I mean, he was he was singing and screaming a second ago. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, what what? So what 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 do you do? You play anything? Yes, um, I play guitar since I started when I was in primary school. So oh, we're wow. talking about okay. something more than twenty years. Um, but this visceral instrument that always kind of caught me, but I never really played it, was the drums. So I bought myself last summer my first drum kit, so an electronic wow. drum kit. Yes. And I'm trying since to be a decent-ish sort of drummer. I'm, I'm not well, there yet, but yeah. I always I, wanted I, to do it. Do, I, I jump on that thing like every fucking day as well, because it's like a proper big kit. Because yeah. they, they, they didn't really have anything for 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 little people so like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my little guy he like when he sits on the stool he actually rests his leg on top of the kick on on top of the kick drum yeah, on, yeah. On, on top of the pedal mm. um because he's uh, small but it, like i can play on it as well because it's like a full-size thing yeah and i i i love it and uh i, I play it daily as well so yeah yeah um, no it's i mean music is is a for me is something also super important and a lot of yeah a lot of my creativity comes from music i, I must say but it's funny because sometimes, because I'm composing quite a lot, honestly, I don't think I have a really good level at it, but I'm, I'm composing just for my own pleasure and to express yeah. a bit. Yeah. And many people always ask me, but you never thought about doing a job on it? And I was like, no, because it, this cannot be a job because if it is, no. it will be painful, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I think, you, you know what, I also, um, music for me is my... Um, not that I'm good at it, but um, I would say it's my first love yeah. over o over design, and I think and um, and I think it's important to keep something like that sacred to a degree. It's like yeah. yes, like we're passionate about design, we love design, we love our jobs, but but um, it is still a job at the end of the day, and I mm -hmm. think it's important to have something that is completely detached from yeah. uh, any it's not even detached from monetary expectations but it's 
any expectations whatsoever. So exactly. the fact that you the fact that you are composing regardless of what the level is, that is a really really productive and important thing to do. And there's a beautiful quote I am going to fuck it up, but I'm going to try and stay it. <laughs> Go for it. By, so by the um, the great um, American, what would, we, what would we call him? A philosopher, Kurt mm-hmm. Vonnegut. Yeah. And he said, um, oh, dude, I've fucking written this out so many times. But he said, um, everybody should practice an art no matter how badly um, because it will, it would enrich your soul at the very least. But it, I need to, I need to find that, and I'll post it in the, yeah, in, in the comments because it was such a fucking cool thing. Because it gives you, it gives, it gives anybody the license to create on some level, and mm-hmm. that can be in our, in 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 our case, playing. Oh, not not in not in our case. You you know how to play guitar, but um, <laughs> you know. In, well. it, but but it gives it gives anybody a license to do anything. So mm-hmm. no, in your case, like you know, I'm just gonna play the drums because I want to play the drums, yeah. and even though it's not my main thing, I want to do that, and I don't need a fucking reason to do it because simply because I want to do it, or I want to compose, yeah. or I want to I want to paint a painting. You know what, like any, anything like that and anybody should do it, especially if they are, I don't know, accountants, you know, they should, they should definitely, they should definitely do something creative. Cause it, ah, I can, I can only agree to that. I mean, it's, it's like you say, the fact that it's out of any sort of pressure and that you don't have to deliver anything, it's just a way to release and also sometimes when you had a, a day that is not as good as the others, you know, just, just to do it and not expect anything from it, just doing it. It's, yes. it's, it's really helpful, actually. And yes. I really need, and honestly, I really need it also because my, my friends and my family would tell you, if I don't have this, I'm literally 24-7 surrounded by cars because... Yeah, like typically like people that know me would tell you that when it comes to stuff like model cars, I'm an absolute idiot. (laughs) I mean, you can you it's easy to get carried away with all that shit. But then you do realize that. um, Yeah, if you if you if it it, it can become so one dimensional, if you just constantly focusing on that shit all the time. Yeah, I I encourage anybody else to. um you know, to step away from it and, and to, to, to tap into other things. And I think that our industry particularly is quite bad in, 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 um, I don't know what I, I, I mean, I, it, it's not easy to pin it down to one particular thing, but th- there's so many, um, young people that maybe become designers and that's kind of all that they are passionate about initially. And then their whole identity gets tied up in them being able to say to their friends or a stranger, Oh, I'm a designer, you know? Mm. And mm. it's so while, while you, you, they might get a buzz off it, like in the first five minutes, it's so fucking sad when you, when you think like that's, that's the only thing that you're about, you know? And of yeah. course, of course, like everybody is more than that, but it's just, we choose sometimes to, to, identify way too much with our our job and it's it's you are not your job you know there's there's more to you than than your jobs yeah that's that's something i really had to learn because when i started in the in this in this job you know with all my background and everything i was expecting from it i mean it was like up there on the pedestal really yeah yeah it took me a little bit of time to just kind of take it back, not being disappointed or frustrated in any way, just to kind of put it back at its place of being an actual job. Because especially when you're a student and where you're pushed so much to give all of your time and energy to, to, to make it happen, right? And I mean, as I joined the ISD a bit later, I didn't start the first year, I started the second year. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt the pressure really to build up a cool portfolio as quickly as it can be to have a job, uh, an internship at a, at a car company. 
Yeah. So you 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 turn in that in in that kind of mindset where it's all about the job, like absolute one hundred percent. Yeah. And when you actually start in the job, it was like a big, big effort to reverse it back to normal and start to say, okay, but actually, when you go out of your job, what you do out of it is what is feeding it. Yes. Not, it, it yeah. It's not like yeah. self-feeding. And this yeah. was a tough thing for me at the beginning. I mean, it. Uh, listen, I, 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 I had, I had the same problem as well. Not that I have your skill set, but um, you know, I. Th that that advice is all relative at the end of the day. I think in your case, you, by that stage, you had certainly already mastered at least to a, um, uh, to a degree your, your craft. You know, I mean, there was still so much that you had to learn about actually being a professional, yes. but in terms of, but in terms of you being able to draw and render and, and present your ideas, I'm pretty sure that your that it was like, you know, 80% there already, if not, you know, at a, you know, it was certainly at a, at a specific level. And then, and then, yes, then it's absolutely is important to, to dial it back. I think somebody, I don't know, like myself, that I had to really, I, I, I had this realization pretty late in the day. So I had to really um, single-mindedly throw every atom of myself at this this craft you know which yeah. eventually which eventually transitioned from 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 drawing primarily to to alias but um and i also put it down to my you know i don't know maybe lack of a gift i i, I don't know you know i had to i had to really work hard at it but it was for for somebody like I think it's important to know yourself. You know, know number one have 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 um, good self uh, um, uh, realization is not the right. It's, yeah, self realization, self uh, whatever, self realization, and 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 also know where you are at. You know, just be realistic about where you are in in terms of where you want to get to in your skill set. You know, and, yeah. and I I knew that you know, for a long time, I just wasn't there. Even after I finished university, you know, I mean, especially after I finished university, I realized that there was a mismatch between where I wanted to be and, and where, I, you know, and where I was at that moment. So yeah. I also, I had to, I did exactly what you, what you saying. And then, and then, but by the time I eventually got my foot in the door, um, then it took, I don't know. It took a while, but eventually I was able to kind of ease off a little bit. But I also had, you know, I got when, when my first job wasn't. Uh, I didn't get. A, I didn't have anything permanent. So again, mm -hmm. I still, although like I was inside, I still felt like fuck. You still got to prove yourself, you know, because yeah. maybe your contract, maybe your contract doesn't get extended. So I was still in that in that mindset, you know, really, really hard. So. Mm -hmm. um, but at some point, yes, that that time comes where you realize, okay, it is you have to unplug. It's it's productive to do something else, and uh, yeah. to to realize that, yeah. It's it's super important, and this is this is one of the reason why now I am struggling a bit with the home office thing, because it 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 required from me so much effort uh, to disconnect that now home is home, and yes. I'm 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 not one of these talented talented guys that are really able to keep sketching at home and you know feed their Instagram page with like super crazy top sketches. I I just cannot do it yeah. because at yeah. home you know there is there is private life waiting for me. Yeah. And uh, you know taking care of the girlfriend and everything. It's and and at the end, since I I managed to really make the split. I realized that I became a bit more efficient in my way of proceeding, just you know, in terms of creativity. Yeah. So yeah. now that it reversed a little bit with home office, as soon as I have to work from home, to me it's a bit difficult to 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 make it happen. So I spend most of the time I can in the in the office according to what is you know legal. But I still enjoy. The more the time I spend in the studio just because when I'm in the studio it is all about it full on 100% and when I leave it well, dude, I, think I that's, leave it, it behind yeah, me this, this. 
Well, there's, I think this is something that we're all learning now at the moment, you know, that it like kind of, you know, having, having somewhere to go to is, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a very productive thing because you can, it's like, you know, you've got a clear, um, subconscious association with that place and that environment that when you go in there, you're there to do a job. And when you leave, you leave that shit, you know, behind. In theory, yeah. I mean, like, of course, you know, that there's there's various degrees of that, but you know, the 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 general premise is that. Whereas, yeah. like, at the moment, I mean, I I, I had a, a a space that I was working out of, which I've just cancelled now because it was like I haven't been there in like three months, mm -hmm. but that was also primarily because we had. Uh, my little guy was at like we had problems with kindergarten and whatnot and and he was basically home for um a while and uh, both my wife and I were working from home so we, I had to I had to stay in and and help with that so mm -hmm. um and and the point to this fucking long-winded rant is is that um is that you know everything is kind of now I'm doing everything from home you know I'm 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 doing my day job I'm I'm like recording this and uh and and also trying to have some sort of separation which I'm terrible at you know there's there's different ways you can do it obviously I I know a lot of them one of them is is just like you know you can do a, a what they call a fake commute which like at the end of your day you get outside and you go for a walk you go for a run or you mm. ride your bicycle whatever the case is and you have that half an hour or an hour to kind of decompress and and separate you know yeah which um is easier said than done yeah no it's but I, I i see the value of it because when i was working for kia i was living literally next door it took me a couple of minutes to walk to the to the studio where now to go to the studio i'm i'm somewhere around an hour and right it it it, it sounds long but it's actually really valuable because at that time, you know, you put your music on and you just kind of yeah. escape. Yeah, yeah, you listen yeah. to podcasts like like this one called Crown and Filtered. Yeah, and, I heard uh, about that. You heard about it, right? Yes. Yeah. And you, I mean, okay, this is then related to job, but still, you just release it. So when you come yeah. home, it's all behind you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's so true. And I think, like you know, as you said, an hour sounds long, but it's uh i mean it's it's um it's probably not a bad time you know to to you know read a book or ca i mean if you assuming you're on a train or as you said you know listen to a podcast listen to music um i don't know whatever you know just uh just just chill out you know otherwise yeah. it's i like now at the moment when from the minute i wake up I'm already thinking about, you know, uh, work immediately. Like mm. it's so I, I've, I've got to, I've got to make a point this year of, of really being serious about that. You know? uh, so. It's, it's still something I have to work on because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a lot to sleep because it keep, keep cooking in my head still, because at the end it, it's, it, it remains visceral and it, it yes. will always be. So even if I manage to make the split, the temptation is always there to, you know, yes. check inspiration stuff. And then you start to think about it. And then there is this idea that comes up and you want to put it somewhere to not forget it. And then you're back in the thing. It's always yeah. there. It's always yeah, there. Exa exactly. Exactly. But listen, I want to, I want to show you something quickly. One second, one second. Sure. Go for it. No. <laughs> so, uh. so dude so so i um so this this guitar is like a fucking i i i've had i got this when i was 16 mm -hmm. and um for i don't know for a long time it was just like in my parents garage and um i um a, i don't know a few years ago my my, we cleared up my parents' house and, and, and it was in my brother's garage now. So it's been sitting there for like the last few years and he's been going like, dude, can you please come and fetch this? Can you do something? So anyway, I was in South Africa in, uh, in December mm -hmm. and in November actually. And uh, this thing was like, dude, the pickups were fucked. And it was just, it was completely 
Like I thought the neck was bent, but it's not. It's completely fine. And and anyways, I took it to a local shop and they they put in new pickups and they like set the action and every, it's just it's beautiful now. And it's um yeah. So I've got this thing recommissioned, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a bunch of other old dads that I know, like myself, that um also they all. I don't know. We're all kind of at a similar, a similar level. I'm pretty terrible, but um, we um, are gonna, yeah, start a start a band if we can find a um, a, a rehearsal space. So yeah, I I'm I'm that's one of the things that I want to do to kind yeah. of switch off. Yeah, I'm I'm missing a bit the band thing. I had one when I was in high school. I mean, it was very very amateur, right? Yeah. But I'm missing I'm missing a bit the band thing because there is this kind of Everybody is releasing in the same time, so then you release even more somehow because yes, you yes. It, it it just you know takes everything out of you somehow. So now that I moved to Cologne, maybe there is a way to find something to make it happen. And you know, as I'm starting with the drums, also to progress much faster. You always do yeah. when you're in a band, I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know what, like. I mean, number one, I, you're not going to have that problem. But like for a long time, I've wanted to do this at so many points, but I, you always kind of feel, um, I, 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 well, you can feel intimidated, but it's finding, it's such a rare thing, especially as an adult, to find, number one, somebody that's probably at a similar-ish level to you. Yeah. Because if it's like completely unweighted, that doesn't work. No. And then if you do find somebody that is, that, um, you know, that they are as enthusiastic about it as you are. Yeah. And and I have to say, I never fucking thought I'd find this at the age of 38. But um, I literally have got like three other dads that – are all like we all i mean bar one of them is 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 like a total like he's never picked up the bass but we were like we'll show you what to play mm. um but everybody else is a, at a kind of similar level and everybody's really keen to do it and i just i'm i'm super excited about it so yeah that's um, good that's really good yeah it sounds yeah, super promising yeah. actually and if, bass is probably going to be the next instrument i will try to touch on Dude, bass is cool. I've got to, I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to spend some time on bass because with you know the little guy playing drums, it's a really um, good accompaniment to that. Yeah, you know, we can absolutely. have our own little rhythm section. And I, I, I bought my daughter um, a keyboard for for Christmas, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I, I hope she, she, she picks up on that as well, so we can all just kind of. Mm -hmm play music together but if not you know we me and her can draw together on paint she's she's a really creative little little person she's very so you creative. so yeah, you're she, you're yeah. surrounded by creative people then oh it's, it's completely nice. yeah a hundred percent i mean i i kind of you know we had this grand plan that um the kids could either be like professional musicians or like tennis players you know because they they earn pretty good money so if, as long as they nail those two things everything's everything's okay <laughs> fine <laughs> yeah yeah so you told but, them to avoid car design then <laughs> yeah well dude i mean i who knows you know we'll see but i also don't you know it what I, i'm it's going to be very intriguing to see what this job is going to look like in 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 i don't know 15 years but i but i think there's always i mean it's it's going to exist you know it's just going to be a lot different you know and uh i i think we're going to have more and more job work at let's say because at the end you know when you, when you talk about it when you go back to cars for a long time the differentiation point on cars were not only relying on, on on the style of it it was also the package you know the body type right engine yes. type powertrain all that stuff yes but now we're going into an era where the technology will be given the power will be delivered the same way all the cars tend to become crossovers i mean SUV, CUVs, crossovers. So I think we're going to have much more work as all the differentiating points, most of them actually will rely on us. So I think our, our work will become more complex because it will 
not be only about styling, but you know, this whole experience thing and, and all that comes uh, in it. It will, it will be more and more important. But I think, I think that the, the work will be, will be very interesting at the end because we will be forced to find new way of attracting customers to our products rather than another one. And we can't yeah. just rely on the fact saying, oh, we have the, the rear wheel drive proportion long bonnet thing. That, that's, yeah. that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic, really, because it, it, there is a lot of changes, but this will create a lot of opportunities also. Well, yeah, I mean, 100%. I, I'm, by the way, I'm also very optimistic. I just don't know what um, things are going to look like within OEMs specifically. Yeah. But um, there's definitely, definitely going to be, or, and there's already a ton of, of opportunity in other areas and i think that that graphic like the role of a car designer or industrial designer or product designer whatever you want to call it um is is going to become mainstream a lot more mainstream than what it is now you know where where because people are going to become aware of the value or the the necessity to have somebody like that involved in creating something really, really beautiful yeah. or, or fun functional, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, uh, we're already starting to see, you know, like mobility startups left, right and center, but also like robotics. That's one thing as well. Like I, you know, Chris Bangle was talking about, um, um, you know, the fact that there's this, um, you know, he's like the, 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 I don't know what, the, what the term was, but this, this, um, this, this weird, uh, pho almost phobia that we've got of, 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 of the robots, you know, like that they've got, because so many companies have made something that kind of almost looks like a human, you know, mm -hmm. that they're trying to, they're trying to make it look like a human, which is like fucking weird. Like yeah. why do it's, it's totally unnecessary. Like, yeah. And, and um, you know, these are, these are things that, that I guess will be more obvious to us in, in, in the future. But what he was saying, which was really interesting about, um, about what we do, as as car designers specifically, not mm. even uh, uh, as as industrial designers, but specifically as car designers, where you create an object that gives, like if you take a, I don't know, a Jaguar for example, you know, mm -hmm. you're creating a a gesture of an animal. You don't yeah. have, you don't you, like this. They are like you know feline feline features in like the haunches and 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 maybe in the stance of it, and but it doesn't mean that you need to put a fucking tail on the back, you know, or like things that look like a big angry mouth on the front. You know, it's, it's like, you know, you can, you can hint at these things without, without being too literal about it. And I think that yeah. this is, this is something that the robotics industry is, is, um, you know, they, 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 they there's a lot of work is going to need to be done mm. over there. But I, but I have the feeling that, um, you know, as technology is becoming a, a more and more important thing in, in the products themselves for cars and also the rest, I think there is a tendency that will come out from this, which is that, yes, technology can be the excuse, but sometimes I, I think people also look for something else and technology is just the way of, delivering a certain type of product i mean something that i'm that i'm pushing quite a lot for in in my designs is the simple notion of joy i think i think this is something that that gets kind of forgotten because it's all about being you know aspirational and you always target for this kind of yeah hyper technologic thing and everything but sometimes i think we should just focus a bit more on what makes people joyful right and yeah. some people might be okay with a certain level of technology but they don't necessarily want to have to to have it in their face it can be more subtle it can be like a sweet technology if you want to and i think this is something that will slowly come again that 
you know, when you see people, for example, now that are buying back this, this Polaroid cameras or the vinyls and everything because they yeah. search for... The, these people, at the end, they, they don't refuse technology because you can have all these, these, these things like with the latest and greatest. It's just that it doesn't necessarily have to be in your face. It's there. You know it. It will do yeah. the job. But what yeah. you look for is this joy factor, really, this thing that speaks yeah. to your emotions. So I think as, as, as much as the technology will become a very important thing, um, there will probably be a point where simple notions like this, I think, could be back on the table as really serious things you're targeting for. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's already happening now, you know, and, and like we, I, I literally, I think it's become really obvious in the last two years specifically, mm -hmm. but, but, but maybe more of the need to unplug. And yeah. as you know, there's, 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 and it, and as you said, you know, it doesn't mean that we are anti-technology and that everything is bad and that VR is bad and this, like everything in moderation at the end of the day, but the need to the, 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 the importance of, of, of having calm and clarity and, um, and, and, and time away from all these things that could be some become so invasive mm. is, um, it's really important, you know, and it's only becoming obvious to us now. So yeah, I think so. And 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 also, you you know, it's. I mean, what you're talking about is is that, but I think also, you know, the the um the forgotten joys of ritual, you know, mm -hmm. the like taking taking the album out of the sleeve, you know, and putting it on the turntable and lifting the arm up and putting the needle down on mm -hmm. the vinyl, you know, or even just a, 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 a cassette deck, you know, or yeah. even a CD player, you know, the fact of taking something physical out of a case and putting it in and, and, and having the limit of 10 tracks and going like, you know, I, I really want to listen to this album now and I'm mm. going to put it on and I'm going to listen to it. Not constantly flick through an endless, that's the thing, you know, you get, um, you can just get decision fatigue and, and, and you get to the point where you just, you can't decide on anything. Mm -hmm. you know? But this is, but this is almost a very natural human thing, right? If you, if you give time to something, you can then appreciate the quality of it. And if you have something that is suggesting to you that it has to be used very quickly and everything, then you lose the, you lose the quality time you can spend with it. I mean, to me, exactly what you just said, you know, you can use Spotify as your go-to application when you need to listen to music because you're in the train or you're in the public transportation. It needs to go, tac, tac, tac. But when you're at home, you take your time, you put your vinyl on, you look for the quality of the sound and you give it the time it deserves. And it doesn't mean that one has to go on top of the other or that one has to disappear. It's almost like, you know, when internet started to take to take off, everybody was saying, oh, it's going to replace uh, everything. Humanity is going to leave in internet. No, internet is a thing, but we still use internet to book quality times with our friends in, in restaurants in real life, right? So Exactly, yeah. Exactly. I, think, I think it's just that nowadays when you see all of this company coming with their technologies and everything, they sell it almost like it's going to take over. But this shouldn't be, to my opinion. It's just like it's going to be another aspect of your life. It's going to add something. It will be an added value. But it's not about replacing something. If if it has to replace something, it will come naturally because it more, it's more convenient or easier or stuff like this. But it, it, it shouldn't, things shouldn't be designed to replace something else in that sense, you know, this technologic thing. It's, it's not the point, I think. I I think I think you're hundred percent right, and it's like, dude, you know, if if we on the subject of like VR and all that stuff, I mean, I think you know there are some obvious concerns that 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 um, present themselves, but I but I think the minute you zoom out and you look at things from a big picture perspective, and 
Like we've also, we've also been, there was also, as you said, reservations about the internet, computers, and, uh, and, um, and, 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 and yeah, your, your mind before you understand the technology can run away with that completely. You know, mm -hmm. you can think like, yo, this is a, I'm never going to leave my house, especially when, when, you know, when, because the whole th concept of online shopping was not really that obvious in the beginning to a lot of people. Yeah. And then there was a, a bunch of experiments. I mean, I remember in, in South Africa, I, don't, I, I guess there was probably stuff like that in, in, in Europe as well, but there was actually a TV show where they were like, okay, we are going to see now if it's possible to um for you to order stuff online and not leave your house at all like that was a big mind-blowing thing ah. and of course we do that do that all the time now right mm -hmm. but you know at the time it, I'm, and i'm literally i'm talking like you know 20 years ago mm -hmm. um and and uh and that was like kind of quite a mad concept to think about it at the time and then of course people were going like oh, fuck you know we 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 never going to talk to each other anymore because you know, we're just going to stay in our houses because we don't need to leave. And it's like, yeah. well, if anything, the pandemic's taught us is that, you know, we need to fucking leave and we need to be um, connected to people once in a while. And yeah, we probably will have moments along the way where we're super antisocial and we don't fucking talk to each other and whatever. But ultimately, we are social beings and we need to connect with people. Absolutely. And, uh, and each yeah. and, and each medium corresponds to a certain use at the end because you could say that online shopping, like some would have said that it would take over completely. So yes, when when you when you have to buy some milk at the last minute, something well it, yeah, it makes sense to order it on the internet and just wait for it, or you know some stuff you would order on Amazon. But still. This isn't replacing the moment you're going to go to this shop in Berlin that is this really kind of special shop that has this special touch to it. And you're going to value, even if you're not buying anything at the end at this precise moment, just valuing the experience you're doing out of it. Absolutely. And yeah. at some point, yeah. I think, I feel like as soon as technology, technology comes into something, it's always like coming like it's going to take over. And then yeah. it slowly steps back again. And I could yeah. actually take this example in car design with clay and digital. Right. Because there was a point not so long ago when I heard so many people saying, we're going to go full digital. And it was even a selling point like, oh, it's going to be full digital. So yeah, the digital tool is absolutely great. But somehow there is still things about clay. I think you cannot replace it. I think again... Digital came saying I'm gonna kill clay, but no, it's it's complementary. I think the two mediums really have their strengths, and you cannot just yeah. ignore them. Yeah, 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 and and yeah, it's 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 so true. And I mean that 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 conversation is like it's it's boring now because it's like everybody's been talking about it forever, and it's yeah. Like, you know, you can you can hypothesize one way or the other. You know, you and there's arguments for both. But I think you're absolutely right in saying that that the two things are complementary. And then throw VR into the mix as well. Of course, there's a bunch of alias modelers that are like, you know, concerned that, um, you know, if I don't get on top of this thing now, that you know, then like that, my job's threatened again. And it's like it's it's again it's it's it's. Uh, it's going to be another complimentary thing that, mm. you know, I, I'm still yet to be convinced on the whole thing of creating in VR. I mean, I know it's, I know a lot of people enjoy it and, and mm -hmm. like it. Um, I think that there's, yeah, I, I, it's a conversation for another time, but I mean, there's, 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 it's great that like, I can be in Tokyo and you could be sitting in, I don't know, New York and we can get together and we can work on something together. Of course it's great. Mm -hmm. But again, it depends on like, do you really like to work like that? I'm a pretty antisocial person in that regard. I don't like to do shit like that. You know, <laughs> I, I find it awkward and weird and, and I, I like to work with other people, but in a different, like in a kind of, you know, everybody's got their thing. It's a kind of divide and conquer mentality and you've got your skill set, I've got mine and we'll bring those two things together and create something great. 
Yeah. I'm not really a big fan of like, let's both build this body side together. I, I can't think of anything fucking worse, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, uh, but, but, you know, it's a, uh, it's again, it's a, it's a complimentary tool for sure. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, it's, 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 it's obvious that there's a lot of shit that's going on at the moment, not just in car design, but just technology in general. And it, and it is easy to get overwhelmed with the amount of things that is hap- happening and at the rate at which they're happening, you know, um, throw into a global ba- pandemic and it's easy to, you know, just lose perspective on, you know, how good things are really, you know, mm. that, um, we can't, there's a lot to be grateful for. Um, and, uh, and there's so much opportunity around, especially, you know, the ability to remote work and whatnot. Yes. It's not ideal if you don't have a place to, to, to physically go to, but it does also mean that you can choose the place that you want to be working from, you know, yeah. and that can, that can be on a beach in Thailand if, if mm. that's what, if that's what you want, you know, so it's a lot yeah. of good shit around. So don't, don't be miserable. No, that definitely, definitely. No, it's it's generating some convenience, you know, when you need to. It's 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 nice, you know, to be at home one day if you have like a special appointment and you say, okay, I'm gonna go to this appointment and add an extra hour uh, the evening, right, to to compensate or something. You have this kind of freedom, but still, you need to be you need to touch base, you know, and and yeah. and get back to the thing and see from it again it's complementary i think it's just any adding another another thing to the to the skills palette somehow but then it's up to you to decide and i don't think it's always about erasing one for another you can take I the best of both yes absolutely the the key takeaway there is it's like it's not it's not all it's and you know we are we are living in the in the in the time of and 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 that means that you can choose what that is, you know, and, yeah. um, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, you, you, yeah, everything in moderation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Michael, dude, I don't know how long we've been talking for, but it's been a fucking w- a while now, I think. And, uh, yeah. and, and it's flown by, um, that said, I probably need to wrap up soon. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't really know what else I could ask to end on except um, advice for young people wanting to start out in this business. Oof. That's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> um, where should I start from? I think what is what is the most important is try trying to identify what you aim for. Um, you know, and it can be s- simple things like I just want to be happy by doing a job that I'm passionate about. Some would say no, a job should never be passionate. It's only going to feed me, and that's absolutely fine. I think when you want to enter the car design job. It has to be a patient because it's very demanding. And the fact that it's related to the artistic side, it's also very related to who you are as a person. Um, I think, you know, you need, to, you need to have the feel for it. You need to have, to have this somewhere in you that is like saying, you know, it should happen. And then just just push for it. Honestly, I think there is no limit. I've heard so many times people saying to me like, oh, you know, but there is so little amount of, of space for people in this industry. You know, there is a lot of people that want to do this job, but at the end, the spaces are, the, 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 it's limited, right? And it's even more true today when you see the amount of talent on Instagrams and everything. It's like tons of, of good guys um but still you can be one of them so you should never be stopped by someone saying to you ah you know you know that will start to put doubts in you the one you should listen to is the one that is going to say to you no it can actually happen and this is what pretty much happened for me with with like patrick you know i knew it existed i knew it was here somewhere 
So as it was something that I really wanted, I just tried to ignore as much as I could things that would go against it, saying that I was um, maybe not clever enough or not good enough at school or stuff like this, because actually I was quite terrible at school. Yeah. But, hey, you know, when you keep only drawing at some point, you get what you deserve. But this is the thing. You should, if this is really what you want to do, there will always be a way. And if, if, and if there has, and if it has to be only one guy, it can be you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, that's, that's great advice and it's so fucking true. And I, I just, I can't, I can't imagine ever having the audacity to say to some young, young person, you shouldn't do that because you know, it's, it's, it's difficult or you're not going to make it. Like how the fuck do you not know that you are speaking to the next, I don't know, you know, the next Thomas Ingelat or, you know, the, the next Patrick Lecomont mm. or, you know what I mean? Like, how, like, how do you fucking know that? I mean, do you like, I, and I honestly, I think that anybody that's had a degree of success in, in not just in car design, but in any, um, in anything will would encourage anybody else to 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 follow suit as well mm -hmm. so if you are speaking to somebody that is that is telling you not to follow um your passion or your dream or your aspirations there's probably a lot it's probably got a lot to do with their disappointment in how, yeah. how things have turned out for them which doesn't mean that you know you should you should uh uh, not like them but it just means that you should maybe speak to somebody else that's going to give you the advice that you've just given so absolutely that's, absolutely that's brilliant it is yeah. it is it is really really important because like you say some people can be a bit frustrated or you know everybody lives its own reality so they might have all the good reasons in the world to tell you that you should let it go but at the end it's 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 not up to them and i think this is what is really important and this is also what i'm looking for uh, in managers and stuff like this in mentors and things yes i think the legitimacy of it should never be questioned you should never put doubts on why you're here or you know why you're showing something and stuff you should just take it for what it is and say say okay it's this or it's this level yeah how can we move on from there? Yeah, yeah. And when you do things like this, I've seen at the ISD when I worked with the younger guys that still had a lot to learn, you know, if you, if you, if you try to be a be empathic and see the other person as another reality, you can just build up on it and say, look, this is where you, you're at. Fact. Let's, let's make it better. And you should never, ever question why you are here right now. And I think this is a too common thing when you see like, you know, you were talking before about these people that are advising you about what to do and everything. I've seen so many of them questioning first who you are. And that's, that's absolutely wrong. If I'm sitting here in front of you asking you what I should do to do this job, it's not to get an answer that mm, maybe you shouldn't. No, question was, I want to do it. Tell me what I should do. Dude, the, de the decision of, yeah. of doing yeah. it is belongs to me, not to you. A one hundred and fucking ten percent, one hundred percent. There's nothing more that infuriates me when some fucking person on their high horse has yeah. the audacity to to start making life decisions for you. And it's like that's not what I asked, dude. I didn't ask you to to coach me on life. I asked you yeah. what I need to do to get my foot in the door. Dude, you know how many times I heard that as well? Like, pick, maybe, you know, you should, you should, you, duh, duh, kid, don't get into this job. It's, it's, you, it's the wrong business, wrong time. You don't want to do it. It's like, l number one, ball bag, I didn't <laughs> fucking ask you for that. Number two, yeah. you don't know me at all. So maybe you should just shut the fuck up or answer the question. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And this is why now when I go back to, to, the, to the school, for example, and go to see the students, um, when they come to me asking for advices, I mean, I can only give what I have as an advice with the small career I have, but I will never, ever 
put them in doubt about the, the, the choice they've made. You know, if they come here showing a sketch saying, look, I want to do this car or I want to do this, this design to aim at become a car designer. The question is not sure. Question is, okay, tell me what your objective is and we're going to try to make it happen. Yeah. And I think some people that you would think at first don't have what it takes to make it, you would realize by giving them their chance, it yeah. would still happen. And this is why I was saying when I was publishing this post according to your, to your podcast back then about the first sketch for all of us was, was crappy, there will always be someone that will say to you, yeah, but you know, there is something in there. There, there is, I, see, I can see something. And this is the guy you should try to follow and listen to. All the others that will try to discourage you, they're, they're missing the point. They might be right, but they're missing the point. And if you pulled up by this guy that believes in you, you can still achieve something. Even if you might be, you know, average or you have like tons of good people around you. Still, if someone is pulling you up, you can always make it. I, I, that, you know what, that, that is invaluable. Honestly, Michael, it, it is, it is, it's, that advice is so invaluable because it's so easy to get discouraged um, when you, like at the beginning, when, when there might be somebody in your class that is like gifted, you know, mm. and they, they can immediately do it. Or it could also be that in your case, for example, you had already been practicing it for yeah. you know more than 10 years you know and and that makes a huge difference but within that group of people again you don't know like maybe at that point somebody's skills are not that great but with the right inputs that person can completely transform that within a short period of time absolutely and I, think, I think that that is such an important thing to remember because yeah. everyone was once a novice no how or inexperienced you know so regardless of how um experienced or successful they might be now at one stage they had to draw their first sketch and at yes. one stage that first sketch was very shit and we all started the there we all started there and i mean what everybody else would say, and I mean, I can add this also, you know, like keep sketching and everything and all these advices, we, we've heard them. So this, this, this is fact. This has to be. But my personal add to that is really this. If, yeah, never under, underestimate someone, never look people from the top and just try to be empathic and, and if you someone that just wants to do it, try to be close to the people that will pull you up and ignore the others because, yeah, you can do it. You always can do it. And people that will tell you that car design is a really small job, it's difficult to enter and everything. Yes, it is. But still, you can be one of these. There is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be. I think. Great. Great, great, great advice, Michael. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Thank you very much. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. I, it was a lovely conversation and very fun. I hope I, I was decent for first time appearing on the podcast. <laughs> Ab absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely.